So um, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Uh, delighted to see all of you. It's Monday morning, so it's Magic Makeup Monday because it's the first Monday of the uh, of the month, and um, I'm delighted to have your company. Uh, we thought that uh, today we'd have a look at two areas of the face which are actually quite important, which uh, they're important in relationship to each other as well, which is uh, the two bits which frame your face, which are basically up here. And then here, these are the two bits where you start and you finish in terms of adding definition and color and so on and so forth uh, for your makeup. Um, I've been giving this some thought and uh, the, the thought that I've been giving it is to do really with, um, with the history of makeup and how we've applied it and also fashion. Um, I don't know whether any of you saw, there was a very interesting series, I think of three programs that uh, Lisa Eldridge did about uh, makeup through the ages. And she started with the Georgian uh, period and uh, it was absolutely fascinating. And then there was a, there was a very big fashion for, for heavy brows and uh, they couldn't get the makeup. The makeup was very rudimentary in those days, as you can imagine. So they, they used mouse pelts. <laughs> so literally the fur of a mouse. So obviously the mouse was dead. <laughs> <laughs> cut the pelt off and uh, shaped it into eyebrows and stuck it on their faces, which, um, you know, I'm sure looked absolutely lovely. Can't imagine anything worse, not least the fact that it was a mouse pelt. But anyway, the point was that they had all sorts of ingenious ways of um, creating interesting effects uh, on, their, on their faces. Um, and then we get to um, the last century. And it's quite interesting. I've got a book, um, which I'm going to try and hold up here. It's quite a heavy book, but it's called uh, Classic Beauty. And I'm going to hold this up and I hope you can see it. This is a picture of the 1930s. And I say, I'll, I'll hold it up again. And if you, if you look at this, you can see, and it's exactly what we'd expect to see. She's got very thin arched eyebrows. Uh, almost no other ma eye makeup as such, although the photograph shows that she has got some eye makeup on, but she probably in real life would have worn very little in the way of eye makeup. And then red lips with a, with a really lovely Cupid's bow. So in the 1930s, when we think of that, that sort of um, Greta Garbo kind of look and the way that film stars looked in those days, it was very, very fashionable to pluck all your eyebrows off, to not have any of your natural eyebrows, and then to, to pencil back very thin sort of high arches of color uh, just as uh, you saw in that photograph there and then to put a lot of attention on the lips which were, were luscious and red and quite full uh, so as I say that was one fashion and then we come forward and this is something that you'll all remember um, I'm assuming I certainly do because it's the 1960s so this is the photograph in the book for the 1960s and the main thing here, for me anyway, in my memory, is that as a teenager, I used to go really, really go to town on my eye makeup. So it was a lot of heavy, you know, quite black stuff, a lot of coal, um, very dark, uh, you know, mascara and so on, you know, the sort that you bat on and then wipe the brush along. It was absolutely disgusting. But the thing, oh, it's a bit like mouse brows, isn't it? You know, it's sort of like disgusting in a, in a, in a different way. But um, the thing was to build up as much as you could in terms of mascara. And I don't know whether you remember that Twiggy in one of the famous pictures of her, they'd actually drawn the lower lashes on, uh, the sort of spiky lower lashes on. And of course she often used to wear false eyelashes. So it was all about the lashes, it was about the eyeliner, it was heavy, 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 heavy. And I would feel completely naked until I got my proper, you know, amount of eye makeup on. Um, brows less so, I mean, the brows were there, I, want, I would define them a little bit, but it was a lot to do with the heavy, you know, a safe uh, eyeliner and so on. And no lips, I mean, the lips would be absolutely often white, I mean, just the palest, palest colour that you could imagine on the lips. So all the weight and balance had shifted by the 1950s up to the eyes and away from the lips. Um, I'm now going to be quite, uh, uh, she's agreed to this, so she's accepted this <laughs> invitation to be part of this discussion To I'm going to go to Emily. So we've got somebody um, uh, on this call who's 24 years old. 
who knew that there were such young people in the world? Um, but anyway, Emily is, is uh, 24. She joined our team um, a few months ago and uh, it works within our marketing team and I love what Emily does with her makeup because it's very fresh it's very modern it's absolutely what you would see and expect uh, somebody of 24 to be wearing so let's look at Emily um, I think you can probably if you click on her face if you speak if I talk then I should be um I should come up yeah, if Emily okay. should come up as a speaker now. So um, so I'm going to ask you, Emily, when you look in the mirror and decide what you're going to do in the morning, what, what's what's your focus for, for, for your for your makeup? Um, eye makeup is my is my main thing. Um, I, I was the same as you. I used to not really do lips at all. And I now do. I, I'm be better with lips now, but definitely winged eyeliner I've done since I was like 14 <laughs> and and a quite a heavy brow as well. I think because I've got quite dark hair, I think it's um, it's good a good way to get structure into my face. I think. Yeah, but the, the the sort of heavy brow look that is very fashionable and has been for some time. So you are clearly following that trend to have much heavier eyebrows than um, well, certainly they did in the nineteen thirties. I think it's heavier than we did in the nineteen sixties. So I, you know, brows are having a real moment at the moment, and you're reflecting that by wanting to look modern and you know fashionable and trendy or whatever word you use these days for that for, for those things yeah. <laughs> smart modern young girl um but but you're focusing a lot again on the eye makeup and less so on the lips and uh, you've got beautiful skin so you've obviously got um uh, not particularly paying attention to that. It's all the focus is on the eyes. Okay, so um, that sort of quick whistle stop tour through fashion and uh, and beauty and the way that we accent and uh, draw attention to various parts of our face, um, I hope makes sense to you. And it, it brings me round to the question, well, what should you do when you're older? Should you just look at what's fashionable so look at at emily who is uh, 50 years younger than me um and say okay this is how the young ones are doing it so i'm going to emulate that because uh, you know i want to be seen as uh, as still uh, with it go all my credentials or do you then look at your older face and say ask the question so what does my face need now? I'd like to have maybe a nod to some level of fashion or um, what's current, but at the same time, I have to take account of what the differences are now that I'm older. So I would say that you need to be very wary of adopting wholesale what uh, the younger ones are doing, especially in terms of the eyebrows, just because very heavy eyebrows on an older face immediately creates weight and imbalance in a way that can't be compensated for by the youth of your face which of course is happening with Emily. So whereas Emily just looks beautiful and gorgeous and pretty with the makeup that she's wearing, if you replicate or, or try to emulate that on an older face, you're going to get something that is could look quite scary. I'm going to say that. I mean, I'm even going to you know, make, make that bold claim. So you're obviously needing to adapt it somewhat, which is not to say that you can't still draw attention to your eyebrows um, but at the same time I think you need to then balance that with what's going on with your lips and so on and so forth. So I think the key things when you're older are to do with weight and balance and if you get those two things right then people will look at you and they'll just think you look nice. Um, I think what we're trying to achieve when we're older, I certainly am all the time that I put my makeup on, I'm trying to achieve the best look that I can achieve for me and for my face as it is now. Not as I wish it was, but as it is now. And so I'm very conscious in everything that I do of, of thinking weight and balance. Does this work or am I giving too much attention to one particular area which is imbalancing it, um, uh, it, it is making it unbalanced or um, you know, have I got it about right? So uh, that brings me to uh, what uh, Sally is going to show you and uh, what we're going to demonstrate today. Now, 
we're, we're partly doing this because we've got a couple of new products um, to show you. Um, and they are versions of older products, but we're very excited about them. We're always excited when we get anything new in, uh, uh, in to, to show you. And uh, Sally's very excited about both aspects of these. So um, I'm gonna to come to Sally now and she's gonna talk about uh, our new brow shape, colour, and, uh, and and carry on this conversation that um, I've just started about weight and balance on the face. So over to you, Sally. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, I totally agree with Tricia, and it's just and it's really lovely actually to see Emily, lovely young face with beautiful, beautiful brows. But um, what I've done today, I've done my full makeup except for my lips and my brows. Um, so I am reasonably lucky that I've still got reasonable brows, although I've kind of got a few gaps and they're not quite as long as they, as they should be. They're wearing off a little bit. Um, but I think I look pretty unbalanced with no lipstick on. So we'll come on to lips later. But I am so excited that we have finally got a bring back brow shape for um, people with my sort of colouring. Sort of, it's actually called Blonde. So it's, it's anyone that's got blonde hair, dark blonde hair, light brown hair, that maybe felt that the brown, which we have, is a little bit too dark for them. And the gray is the wrong tone. They don't have gray. So some people look fantastic with gray eyebrows and other people, you know, if I just wear the gray, it's, it's not the right color for me. So I have been waiting for this color for a long, long time. And I know that um, Trisha and the team have spent a long time getting the right color because actually it's not as easy to get a, a dark blonde without it looking red. And I don't know if any of you have ever had your brows done microbladed you, you you can often see people have got sort of like a, a reddish tint on the on the brow and that sometimes with a with a brow color also can come out too red so this is the color i'm going to show you it on the back of my hand first um so i'm just going to paint it on i don't know if you can sort of see that color it's kind of you can't it never comes out quite the same on the computer it looks a sort of, um, it's a cross between a brown, a grey and a khaki colour. So it's a really clever colour actually, and it works really well. I'm so excited to get it. So I'm going to demonstrate um, that colour on me because it's a really, really good colour on me. And I think a lot of you have been waiting for this colour as well. So um, I'm sure you'll really enjoy using it. Um, so the, the, the thing to use also is, I don't know if you have got a spoolie brush, but if you do buy the Bring Back Brow Shape, you can either buy it on its own or in a set with a spoolie brush. And this is an essential tool, whether you have brows or whether you have no brows. Now, if you have no brows at all, um, you've lost pretty much all your brows um, for various reasons, then I would suggest doing your brows before doing your eye makeup. And a lot of makeup artists always do the brows first. I tend to, because I've got some brows, actually do my eye makeup first, then do my brows. So it's up to you. But um, by actually grooming the brows, I kind of do it, you can do it downwards to see where the line is and upwards. It's amazing actually how just different someone can look just grooming their brows with the spoolie brush it can you can use it as a little bit as an exfoliator because you get all sorts of bits stuck in your brows um and it's i don't know if any of you actually have ever cut my brows seem to i get these really long ones that are always they're always the gray ones that are long um and i've invested to show you these these are my comb comb brow scissors <laughs> like so you can literally comb and then just you can snip off any really long ones just got them on Amazon. They're really, really good, really useful. Um, so sometimes I do that first. I actually snip off some of the some of the really, really long ones. Um, in terms of, of of grooming brows, we'll we'll talk about that in a moment. But I just want to demonstrate um, actually this product. As Trisha wants me to show you how it how it works. So um, where to start? I mean, I'm actually quite lucky. My brows. So the starting point. You, Hold something vertically from your nose and that should be the starting point upwards. Where they finish is again from the nose, cutting the corner of the eye outwards. And you can see I've got a bit of a gap, so I need just to add a little bit to mine. And the highest part, again, that depends really on how you want to make your eyes look. That's the one thing about eyebrows, are they're the one thing that you can get into shape without exercising quite like that idea <laughs> so you can shape them without exercising so but if you go from the center 
from that corner of your nose again, through the center of your eye, sort of catching the edge of the iris, that's kind of the highest part normally. So it's sort of two thirds go up and about a third comes down. So you can sort of plot, if you want, if you've got no brows, you can plot three points first with your bring back brow. The secret to using this product is to shake it first it is a liquid, so don't forget, don't just open it and tip it up because it will come out. It's got a really, really fine brush. And what I sometimes do is just take the excess off on my hand. With this one, because it's a nice light color, with a dark brown, I used to have to take a little bit off on the tissue, but I don't with this one. So I like to actually rest my finger here. Um, I'm gonna start sort of in the middle. You'll sort of see and all you're doing with this color is little soft, little soft feathery strokes. So I'm just going to bring it a little bit lower and it really is a lovely dark blonde. I'm then going back, you see into the center area here and going slightly upwards because my brow hairs here go slightly upwards. So all you're doing is filling in the gaps. If you've got brows already, if you've got no brows, you can actually paint in hairs rather than mouse pelt you can actually paint in hairs it sounds much much more pleasant so you can build up as much as you want and just to create a really I don't personally like a very very dark brow on me because I'm fairly fair but you can already see the difference before I've even blended that between hopefully between that brow and this one but it's just such a good color because it's not reddish it's just dark blonde so i absolutely love it then the secret is to go back with your spoolie brush particularly if you've got no brows and you painted it in totally without hairs and just soften it and this is essential um, for any kind of brow application if you I don't like to use pencils, I much prefer this, but if you do use a pencil, again, you still need to soften with a spoolie brush. Um, so you can just sort of see, hopefully that that eye looks a little bit more defined. I've still gone quite light on it than the other eye. I'm just going to um, even up a little bit. So this eye again, I have groomed it. This eye actually, they're a little bit lighter. I don't know, I've no idea why, but they are. So again, I like to start in the middle, it's my little bit, my, it's my arch. I find sometimes if I start here, it goes too dark, but actually with this color, I could start here because it's such a nice natural color. But certainly with the brown, I have to be a little bit careful um, that I started it in the middle so that I had a little bit more color in the middle. Then I fade it out to the end and I'm going to talk through after this just a, a few ideas of brow shapes because it definitely depends on your face shape and your eye shape as to how you can shape these brows. And that's the beauty of brows that you can actually change them very simply and little subtle things that you do can make such a difference to the way the whole look comes out at the end. So I've done this very quickly. Um, Hopefully you can see, I'm now going to just soften. I tend to bend my spoolie brush. It, it come, when you get it, it comes straight. But if you bend it like that, um, it's actually much easier to use and just soften the effect. Okay, so hopefully that looks a little bit more. I still look a bit unbalanced because I haven't got my lips on, but um, this is a brilliant color. Um, if you've got an oval shape face, people have different shape face. So what I'd like you to do after, after this um, Zoom meeting, go and have a good look at yourself in the mirror and have a good look at your eyebrows. And first of all, be, be really um, objective. Think, do I have, are my brows too thick? Have I got lots of sort of ones underneath? Have a good look in a, in a, in a magnifying mirror. It's amazing what you can see in a magnifying mirror. Have you got really bushy eyebrows, which is basically taking this area away? Do they need neatening up? Um, and it might be something that you can do yourself um, with tweezers. If you do, don't go mad. <laughs> do not go mad. It's very easy to go mad as well. Um, I always put some a really hot flannel on mine before I do it, just to open the pores a little bit. And I just I use tweezerman tweezers, and I go from underneath. Um, I know. I think we've already had a question. Can you um, take tweezer from the top? 
I take a, the odd one from the top, but it's very, it's, you want to keep that shape um, and the top is important. So don't go mad taking them from the top. Obviously, if you've got some really high up ones, take those away, but you really do want to take them from underneath. Um, it might be that you actually decide to go to a beautician and get them waxed or have them threaded or something like that, just to get away. Sometimes you have very, very fine little hairs like fluff here that actually can also affect your eye makeup. And if you get that, rid of that, it can just have a whole sort of cleaner look. So have a good look at your brows. Um, if you haven't got much brown, you need to change the shape. Then again, if you've got an oval face, Keep your brows fairly soft um, and you know, my sort of brow shape, sort of fairly soft, but with a bit of an angle. Um, if you've got a very round face, look at your round, how, if your face is quite round, you might actually want to slightly arch them up a little bit more than natural, which will basically draw the eye up and make the, have the appearance of making your face look a little bit longer. I'm not talking really high up, but just a smidgen uh, can make a big difference. Um, and if you've got a square face with quite a lot of angles, again, you might want to soften that um, with a, more of a curve than a two, two angle brow. So you're sort of compensating for what you've got. Um, if you've got a very, um, a very, very long face, quite long and thin or an oblong shaped face, you might want to do the converse to the, um, the round face and make the brows a little bit flatter. So don't go too high, which will again have a have the effect of just shortening the face slightly. Um, and again, a sort of an upside down triangular face. Again, you might want slightly thinner, but rounded brows with longer tails. The tails are important as well. If you've got sort of very hooded eyes as well and everything is drooping down, if you bring the tail down too low, that can have the effect of actually increasing the hooded effect of your eye so you might want to sort of flatten the tail slightly out not lift it not actually lift it up but make it a little bit a little bit flatter a little bit more um, horizontal at the end rather than coming down too low if you look in your brows you've got very close together eyes sort of close set eyes on your face what you can also do is just pluck away a little bit more of the hair here which will just create an, an appearance of more width on your eyes um, and if you've got very very far apart eyes then you can draw in your brows a little bit further so again it's creating as Trisha was talking earlier about balance you're creating balance and the one thing is very easy actually to create the correct balance using brows using tweezers and using our bring back brow shape and the spoolie brush you can really make a massive effect Particularly now we're wearing, a lot of us are still wearing masks. The thing that we see when we go out are our eyes and we see our brows. Brows are massive. Um, you know, lips are important, but at the moment we're looking at eyes a lot more. And if you wear glasses as well, look at where your glasses sit on your face in relation to your brows. Um, do, do they sit right on the brows? Um, are they above? Where, where do they sit? And just sort of make sure if you wear glasses that you still got a good frame I and mean, that the glasses might end up being the frame of your eyes. But if they're not, then make sure that your brows are really, really well done and well groomed. It's a, it's a really nice grooming look. So um, I hope I hope that's helpful on that on that front. I think I think we've finished on that, but I'm really excited about this colour and I think lots of you are going to find it just the thing that you've been waiting for. So it's brilliant. So thank you, Tricia. Thank you for getting this colour for us. We love it. I think, I think your daughter loves it, doesn't she? Yes, she does. Uh, we, we kind of always knew we, we had this slight problem because for, for a long time and probably for about four or five years, we just had the very dark brown. And um, I would use it on everybody and anybody that I was doing makeovers on, um, as I think you did too, Sally, in the shops and so on. And I could always get it to the right level of um, density, if you like, by using the spoolie brush. So I couldn't see the problem, but it did go on 
as a much darker shade than uh, a lot of people could cope with. Um, then we decided that we'd introduce grey and see if that would be one of the solutions to it, given that quite a lot of our customers have grey hair um, and also have very pale brows. And so they didn't want anything brown looking or orangey in tone uh, because they've got grey hair, especially if they're cool toned like me. So we introduced the grey and that has been very successful. And um, I have to say that I do like the grey very much. Um, however, there was there was still a gap for this slightly paler blondy colour for people like Sally who got uh, who are you know who got blonde hair naturally blonde hair. My daughter's got naturally blonde hair, and um, so Susie is the person who uh, who, who sources and uh, helps us to get our new products. So she part, she's part of the new product development team. And when we got sent this latest iteration, which is the one that we've decided to go with, we tried a lot of different colors and believe me, some of them were just dreadful, very much too orange. So anyway, the latest iteration and she tried it. We gave it to Sally to try. It's not, I can't wear it. It's not right for me, uh, but it's, uh, so, so Sally gave us a big thumbs up almost immediately. And Susie just kept saying, I'm loving this. I'm loving this brow shape. She's always used our brow shape, but it was better color for her. So yeah, it's, it's definitely, I think now we've got the three, we're pretty much there in terms of, of having the bases covered. Um, so I do hope those of you who find the dark brown too heavy uh, will think about trying this because I think I think it is a, a really good solution. You can see on Sally how beautifully um, it's worked because it has defined her eyebrows really well, but um, not without giving extra too much weight, which is what we were talking about. So I'm gonna go back to you, Sally. Um, you're gonna just talk, to, uh, talk to, to us a little bit about our new longer lasting lipsticks. I am. I just wanted to show you actually the three colours as well as the brown. I thought I'd put them on. So that's the grey, that's the blonde, and the top one is the dark brown. So I don't know if that's helpful to you as well. You can sort of see the difference there. Um, so there are there is a difference. So sort of it's like a donkey grey brown, blondy. I can't really describe it, but it just works. So mouse, it's mouse pelt. <laughs> Absolutely, it's mouse pearl colour. That's what that's what they went asking for, wasn't it, Trisha? <laughs> if only they'd had this in the uh, 18th century or 19th century, they'd have been so thrilled. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so lips, lips, lips. Again, I know we've been talking about this for a long time, but um, finally, we have now got all the longer lasting lips lipsticks have come out, and I am really excited about that. In the past, when I have used long lasting lipsticks, I have found that they dried my lips out very much. So I've actually always been a bit anti long lasting lipsticks. I would just do my blotting, double blotting, powder on, triple blotting and, 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 and reapply. Um, but when I, I was actually asked to try some of the warmer shades, um, there are three warm and three cool um, colors in this range. And I was really, really pleasantly surprised how creamy they are and how they do not dry your lips out. Because I, I can't abide dry lips. I just, it's one of my pet hates when my lips feel dry. I don't like it at all. Um, we, we, in the shop, when we used to do makeovers, brows and lips were always a little bit of a contentious point, actually, with, with ladies. Um, it was either they were frightened to do their brows and they were frightened to wear a lipstick because they didn't want to sort of stand out. And what Trisha has said earlier is I think so, so important. Um, if, you, if you skip the lipstick phase or if you just put a little slip of balm on um, like I've done this morning, or if you have um, just put a tiny bit of light gloss on, you can, as a, as a older face I and mean, it's different for Emily. Emily's got that look and she's 24 and she looks fantastic with a lighter lipstick but for me I just feel that if I do that I don't feel finished and I don't feel that the balance is right. So um, I know you read in all the beauty books that if you have strong eyes you've got to have nude lips and if you have strong lips you've got to have nude eyes but I just think as we get older balance overall is really quite important. Um, so I would suggest that, yeah, don't, don't, don't just, just go for the boring nude all the time. Be a little bit bolder than you might normally be and try, try something a little stronger. Um, people have been using lipsticks. We talked about the, um, the history of the brows. People have been using lipsticks. It goes way back 
I think 3,500 BC in Mesopotamia, um, the, they, they used to use fruits and crushed beetles and henna and clay rust to give themselves a nice little bit of colour. So thankfully, again, we don't have to do that. We can just use our lovely colours. So in the warm colours, we have got rosewood, which is one of our top selling colours. I think a lot of ladies love rosewood because it, it is, it's, it's kind of neutral, but it's got a little bit more to it. So, but it's, it's, it's a really good colour. There's rosewood and there is also uh, foxy lady, which is the slightly stronger colour. Um, and there is also soft coral. Now soft coral is an interesting one. It is, although it's in the warmer category of lipsticks, I think it's got a little bit of blueness to it. So I actually think that cooler color bring can wear this too. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate, I can't really demonstrate all three because if I demonstrate all three, it's gonna take me a while to get them off between them because they do last. They do come off, but um, what you need to do is use a, a, a good amount of cleanser to get them off at the end of the day. And what I've, I, when, I, when I trialed them, um, I would put them on, it would last, after lunch, I would maybe put another layer on and then it would last literally all day and I'd have a sort of a good stain of colour on my lips all day. So lips. If you're in a hurry, OK, go straight to it and go to the bullet. But if you can use a lip brush, it does make a massive difference. Um, one and another little tip as we get older, often you get more sort of lines down here. And our lips, we often look quite sad. We look more sad as we get older, I think, with lipstick. So actually, you don't want to put too much lipstick here because it can, it can again, bring the whole area down. So I am going to use Rosewood. And I'm going to use our lip brush um, number five. If I'm in a hurry and I don't use a lip brush, which is, is often, again, rather than going downwards, actually a good little tip is to sweep upwards just to sort of so that everything's not dragged down so that's another little tip so if you're not sure how to put your lipstick on with a lip brush a little tip also is to do that you can just slightly flatten this area so what I like to do is just sort of do the cupid's bow actually what I forgot to do what to tell you to do something I did do earlier was I still use my never feather lip prime I did it earlier so that I've got time I let, had it let, let it time to dry so I would do this at the time of putting on my my other prime mine with my eye primer just to remember to do it and don't forget with this product you actually only put it on the outer edge of the lip not on the lip it's not a lip balm um, because it, it's, it creates a sort of a defense so that your lipstick will not migrate into the fine lines that you might have. So I'm going to it's really hard to do this and not obviously to talk at the same time, so I can't really talk at the same time. So I'm going to actually sweep it upwards slightly. I'm not going to go right into that corner. Um, again, I never put lots and lots of lips in that, in that right, in that inner corner. Underneath, again, I'm going to kind of create a little bit of a, it's as though you're doing lip liner, but with your lip brush. That's the way to sort of describe it. And then, Fill it in. You can get a really, a really pretty effect actually um, with a lip brush. Don't forget to go into all the little sort of stretch of it slightly to get into all the nooks and crannies. So this is rosewood. If you're the sort of lady that gets a little bit of lipstick on your teeth, um, there are two things you can do. I, I tend to, because of the shape of my teeth, when I've applied my lipstick, I just take my little finger and I just go in and out and anything that would go on my teeth will go onto my finger. What some ladies do is actually also get a little bit of either Vaseline or coconut oil and actually 
put it on their top four teeth before putting the lipstick on. I don't bother with that. I just do the little finger in and out. Uh, but this is, you can see hopefully then just by putting, it's a fairly, it goes with everything, this color. Um, but it just hopefully has, you can see that I'm now a little bit more balanced because I've got lips as well as my eyes. Um, and it's not drying. Some of these lipsticks are so drying, but it's still got a really, really, really creamy feel to it, which I think is really important with a, a long lasting lipstick because if it goes on, it's immediately dry in five or six hours. Imagine how, how, how dry your lips are going to feel. You know that I, if you, I've actually got reasonably thin lips. Not, you know, that's the one thing I wish I had slightly fuller lips. Um, so what I sometimes do is put a little bit of um, instant bright highlight at the end. I just create a little bit of shape here. just to sort of bring that forward slightly. You better not, you don't, don't put too much on, otherwise you look as though you've just been and had a cappuccino. Um, so <laughs> just a tiny amount. And I also like, I'm also gonna just add a tiny bit of my favorite gloss. If you've got slightly thinner lips, sometimes a little bit of gloss can have the effect of making them look a little bit plumper. So I'm gonna put the um, cinnamon kiss on just in the center as well, just to create you see my lips, it makes my lips look a little bit fuller. Not, I haven't put it all over, but just in the, just in the center. Um, and at this stage, when I've done my lips, um, I go back and think, do I need any more blusher? I might at this point put a tiny bit more blusher or a little bit more bronzer, just to sort of create that, that balanced look. But hopefully you can see that by putting the lips on, it's, I'm now looking a little bit more balanced. I just feel for me, if I don't, if I don't wear lipstick, I look a little bit ill, I, I feel every morning. <laughs> So I hope that was helpful. Oh, I'll just tell you the, the shade in the cool lipsticks as well, um, which I've just received. Very exciting. You've got Very Berry, Fuchsia, which I know is one of these two of Trisha's favourites, and Dusky Rose. So they're the three um, cool ones that are in the long lasting um, shades. So really, really, really excited about that. So thank you. Thank you, Trisha, again. That, Sally, that was absolutely brilliant. And I, I think that's such a good illustration, looking at your face now, of what I was talking about weight and balance. So there's no, there's no part of Sally's face that I would say is overweight, by which I mean that it hasn't got too much weight attached to any particular area. So the brows, the eyes, the cheeks, the lips are all in balance with each other. And that is a lovely way to make a, enhance a face to make it look better. And that's really what we're all trying to do, isn't it? And, and uh, you know, so it's OK to have fashion, uh, fashion. It's OK to have trends. It's OK to have moments where, you know, the brows become very predominant or the lips become very much more important or whatever. But when you're older, if you do go that route of trying to look, you know, like more like a 24 year old, then I would say that you unbalance your face, you, you draw too much attention, put too much weight in one particular area, and it, it doesn't flatter you, it won't flatter you for all the reasons that we've talked about, you know, endlessly on these Magic Makeup Mondays, to do with all the changes that happen to a face as you get older. So I think Sally's a brilliant illustration of that. Um, uh, just about the long lasting lipsticks, why did we choose those colours? Well, it was very simple. We wanted to, we didn't want to introduce them for the entire range because that was too high a risk for us from a, from a business point of view, uh, because some of them, you know, might not sell. So we, we just looked at our top sellers and uh, the top sellers for our uh, cool tone lipsticks are uh, Fuchsia, which is one of my summer favourites. I love Fuchsia in the summer. Berry Berry, which is what Sally's got on. Uh, sorry, <laughs> she has got that on. I'll show you what she's got in a minute. Uh, very Berry, I've got on. Uh, that's what I wanted to say. So I've got Very Berry on this morning because it's perfect with this slightly uh, purpley shirt that I'm wearing. And then our uh, more uh, paler colour, which is Dusky Rose, but it's very popular with uh, people who are cool toned. So we've got uh, those three in the cool toned. And as Sally said, soft coral we did soft coral again because it's incredibly popular we send up sell a lot of soft coral i think it's great when people soft coral is a good color as sally said when people aren't too sure whether they're cool or warm toned so when they get soft coral it kind of works because it's got enough pink in it but it's also got enough of that coral 
tone in it if you are uh, on the warm side. And then rosewood, which is one of our, uh, the, rosewood we originally introduced as a kind of nude color. Um, but it again, it's not that sort of nude color that I think of as the 60s lip where you don't have really have any uh, color on your lips at all. So it's a, it's a, it's a slightly one up from a nude uh, rosewood and then boxy lady because that's that's our really gorgeous uh, warm tone uh, lipstick that uh, is great for evenings uh, but some people wear it during the day because they love it it's, it's got quite a kapow effect this boxy lady it's a beautiful color so we've started with the six um, we've got some great feedback we've uh, we, we offered them to certain super troopers they were they were all gone in about five minutes when we offered them uh, for a trial for you uh, guys. And we sent them out to various other people as well. Had lots of feedback back. Um, I, we're just a tad under five stars on it, but we've got a lot of five star reviews. Just saying this is brilliant, it really works. Now I've been uh, using these long lasting lipsticks for several months uh, because I was sent uh, the trial size ones and um, I haven't worn the normal lipstick since. And I do love them. I agree with Sally, I tend to refresh after lunch but from then on, I'm, I'm good to go for the rest of the day. And I'm taking it off in the nighttime. I take my makeup off about uh, 10 o'clock and I'm taking it off with uh, my um, normal remover, my face, face remover. I rub it onto my lips and make sure that I then wipe that off. So it's, uh, you know, they do last really well. They, they, I mean, it's not a one, just apply once and gone for the done for the day, but it is uh, pretty much that. They do, they definitely do last longer than the our normal lipsticks and they don't dry your lips out and they look great. Now, I'm sure we've got some questions. Any questions at all you can ask us. It doesn't have to be about brows or lips. Um, if it's a general question, then do feel free to ask. Um, we're here, we're available and we'll give, we'll give as uh, good an answer as we're able to. So uh, let's come to Emily. We've got any questions there, Emily? Uh, yeah, so first of all, Sally, could you just um, run us through the rest of your makeup that you've got on, especially your eyes today, please? Yes, certainly. Um, I am wearing my all the primers um, and I've got, in terms of my foundation, I have got Light Look Beauty Balm number one with one little squirt of Continuous Cover 2.5 and a little squirt of primer. That for me is my, my kind of personal favorite at the moment. Um, I have got peach cream blusher but I've put some of the bronzer over it and I've used the bronzer as well. On my eyes I have used obviously the eye prime first and then I use the um, soft neutrals palette. This one. Um, so I've used rose gold all over. I've actually put a little bit of cream in the center then I use the taupe in my socket line just above um, but because I'm wearing sort of bluey colory sort of blue I decided to be bold and use midnight blue as my eyeliner so I've actually got midnight blue with the um, wedge brush I use the wedge brush number eight as my eyeliner and then I put a teeny 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 amount of midnight blue over my taupe so that's why it doesn't look quite so light as taupe and I often do that if I want to just bring a little bit of the dark colour that I've used as my eyeliner into my socket line without it looking too scary I'll use the taupe first and put a little bit over the top so that's and then I think I actually put a little bit of yes I did a bit of golden mist you know the lid colour which I love the shimmery mid colour I just put a little bit of golden mist in the centre black waterproof mascara and I use my instant bright highlight just on my cheekbones and underneath my um, brows to, to, which is also really important actually, if you've done your brows beautifully and you've got a nice shape, if you put a little bit of the instant bright highlight underneath, um, it will just make them stand out even more because light colors bring forward. So you're bringing forward your brow line and therefore making your, your brows look really clean and sort of a really nice defined look. I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Alison asks, what are your thoughts on letting the brow shape dry a little before using the spoolie brush? I, I think um, that that's pretty much how I use it. I'll put it on um, and, you know, stand back 
make sure that I stand back so I don't get, get a good view of my whole face. And then um, it's pretty much dry by the time I use the smooth spoolie brush. So I, I think that that is how you use it. You put it on and then the spoolie brush is brilliant for just, I, I think of it as knocking it back slightly so that if it's slightly too dark or you've got a bit of a clump, sometimes that you, you, you can't help it because it's a liquid product, a, a bit might sort of suddenly clump like there. But if you take the spoolie brush and just flick it, you'll find that that clump goes and you've softened the whole effect. So the combination of the spoolie, we do sell it as a set. Uh, so the spoolie brush is much, much cheaper if you, than if you buy it separately. And um, I, I think the spoolie brush is pretty essential actually with the brow shape. I think you'll get, you'll get absolutely the, the optimal effect, uh, optimum effect if you use the spoolie brush with the, with the brow shape. Thank you. Um, and Diana asks, with white hair, which colour brow shape should she use? Um, I'd say, I don't know whether you agree with me, Sally, I'd say it depends whether you're cool toned or warm toned. I think if you're cool toned, you probably need the grey. If you're warm toned, I'd say use the new blonde, I'd, I'd buy the new blonde one. But because basically remember that the cool tone, warm tone thing is quite important um, and your hair colour doesn't determine that. What determines that is the undertone of your skin. So if the undertone of your skin is warm and you put the gray brow shape on, it's probably a bit too cold on you. But if you put the blonde on, then it will be sufficiently warm without looking orange. So it won't, it won't, it won't um, fight with your hair. It will tone with your hair, but it will actually look better on you than if you use the gray. Do you agree with that, Sally? I definitely do. Again, looking at them, I mean that you know that. The grey you can see has got sort of more blue tones in it and then the, the blonde one is more of a it's like a donkey brown sort of blonde so yeah I think you're absolutely right the nice thing is if you get it wrong you you can you can send them back so you know you get it you've got your full refund and, and switch it over but yes I would say if you if you're if you're cool toned and you're really kind of ash grey then go for the grey one but otherwise I think the blonde one will suit a lot of people actually yeah I, I just um one of the the problems we had when we were developing the, the lighter shade brow shape was that they kept sending them to us, they were too yellow. Uh, yeah. And that made them look orange on the skin. So that, that because they, they, we wanted them to be a paler brown, when they were mixing the color, you know, you think about it as, as, as choosing the colors that you're gonna mix it with, it, it kept coming back as, as, as looking quite orangey. And, and that is never, nice you know even orange people with orange hair, <laughs> red hair my daughter's got red hair she hasn't got she hasn't got orange eyebrows she's actually got very dark brown eyebrows and i i don't think orange ever looks good as a brow color and that's what terrifies me about some tattooing because some tattooing and we saw it all when we were in the shop looks orange and i i just think it's it's uh, you know it really is quite Quite a difficult um, thing to have permanently on your face, a couple of orange arcs of colour. So I, 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 what I love about this blonde uh, colour that we've, we've managed to produce is actually, as, as you keep saying, it's a sort of donkey brown, it's, it's not orange, it's definitely not got orange in it, and it's when we achieved that, that, that we both felt we could press the button and say, yeah, we want this one. Um, yeah, Emily. Thank you. Um... Also, this isn't a question, but I'm turning it into a question. Hannah said that she also has problems with very dry lips. So she relates to you, Sally, saying that that was a, a pet peeve for you. Um, what, what do you use for dry lips? Do you have any tips on that? All sorts of, there's all sorts of things you can do. Um, keeping, keeping your lips well exfoliated. We talked about that before. You can actually buy lip exfoliants now. I and mean, I, I think before I gave you a little recipe to make your own, um, but you, you, the, elf soap and um soap and glory body shop um burt's bees they all do a little um a little stick that's got little tiny grains in it you can also just make your own with a little bit of brown sugar mixed with a little bit of honey um and even a drop of vanilla oil and just and literally um exfoliate before putting a really good lip balm on because um, and the other thing I do is when I take my makeup off, I use, a, I think I've showed this to you before, I always use a, a, a flannel with warm water in and I make sure that I actually do put that on my lips 
to take off the dead skin cells before putting on a balm. Um, I'm currently using this, this lip balm, which I love, which is Sweet Orange and Mandarin Lip Balm by Art House. So it's a, it's a charity, I think it's one that supports um, the paintings I've got are all by um, uh, adults who are, have got um, disabilities. So I, I just love this lip balm, but I'm a, just a great believer in using a, a good natural lip balm and also using an SPF if you're gonna go out in the in the sun particularly with no lipstick on which you probably I mean I very rarely do I even play tennis with people know who play tennis with me with my full lipstick on but um, to protect my lips but um I just a, a great believer in keeping the lips exfoliated to get rid of that dead skin and using lots and lots of really good balms um and taking yeah taking your lipstick making sure you do get your lipstick off maybe using that flannel as well but yeah I think one of the problems with dried lips is that there may be times when you don't bother with lipstick. So you think, oh, I'm just taking the dog for a walk, so I won't bother to put any lipstick on. I look ridiculous. Or you might be sitting on a beach and think, well, I look ridiculous lying here with a, you know, on a beach with lipstick on. But actually, if you don't put lipstick on, then your lips are very much more vulnerable to the drying of wind or sun or whatever. So I feel, you know, I literally don't walk out the door without lipstick on. And I think that the fact of wearing lipstick is a protective layer which prevents your lips from becoming dried by the elements so uh, I think all makeup satisfies that you know ticks that particular box but I'm particularly you know I, I particularly feel that with lipstick that if you have very very dry lips then you should always wear lipstick because it is a protective layer against the elements. Anything else Emily? Um, this is the last one we have at the moment um, Diana asks is rosewood a good colour for cool toned ladies? What do you think, Sally? Rosewood is in, if you're looking on our, on the website, it comes up as a, a slightly warmer colour. I mean, I've got rosewood on today and I would say it's, it's warmer towards neutral, but I do know ladies that are a little bit cooler toned that have worn it quite, quite well. It's not really orange based, so I wouldn't discount it. Um, but it's more it's more neutral towards warmer, I would suggest. Would you agree, Tricia, if you had yes, to? Yes, when we were developing Rosewood, we felt there was a gap in our colour range for a brownie pink. Mm -hmm. And that's where we developed Rosewood. So our sort of, um, our desire was to have something that, that, that had a brownie tinge to it, but also had had sort of some pinkness in it, which is where the rosewood comes. And the name rosewood, we called it that because the rose is the pink and the wood is the brown element of it. Um, so I think that if you, I, I definitely think that some people, if they're not, I don't think I could wear it because I think it, for me, it, it's actually got too much brown in it. But if you're not as if you're on that spectrum, because I, I feel there's a spectrum, spectrum for colour, there are very cool toned people like me and there are very warm toned people like Sally. Uh, you know, you always look better, much better in, in very definitely warm toned colours, but there's a, there's a spectrum. So if you're much more in the middle, Rosewood would work, I think. So I think it's got just about enough pink in it. Um, and it's not orangey. Again, it hasn't got that orange orangey look, look to it. Hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> Anything else, Emily, or are we done? Um, I think we're I think we're all set. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much indeed. And um, Sally mentioned that she put some of the uh, lid colour in Golden Mist. Golden mm -hmm. mist colour. Yeah, we've got five pounds off that this week with the code Sheer. So if you did want to experiment with the lid colour, or you wanted to, you know, uh, add one to your makeup bag, then this is a good time to get it and um, to try it. Uh, we have three colours, which is is silver mist, gold mist and uh, soft moss um, and they are lovely, they are lovely products for adding, we you know we talk quite a lot about not putting glitter or you know shimmery stuff on your lids when you're older because it draws attention to any crepiness but um, our lid colours have got a very subtle sheen to them and you can see on Sally, she's wearing it this morning, how beautifully it brightens up her eyes, just a touch of it. So if you fancy trying that, I particularly love, love the silver mist and actually with what I'm wearing today, the silver mist would be perfect. Um, 
and uh, it, it's uh, you know it, it's a nice product it's creamy to put on so you put it on creamy you have to let it dry and use very 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 little of it it's a product that you have to apply very lightly which means of course it lasts forever um okay so hopefully that will be of interest to you and thank you so much for coming and joining us we love having your company it's absolutely brilliant and um do come back tomorrow because at four o'clock tomorrow i'm interviewing a really really brilliant and lovely woman Dr. Beverly Searle. So um, we're doing a little promo at the moment uh, for our midsummer um, fundraiser challenge for, a, for a, a charity called Unique. And Beverly Searle is the CEO of Unique. And Unique supports families like ours who have a child with a rare chromosomal abnormality. And Beverly was the first person that I managed to speak to the day after we discovered that India, my granddaughter, had this um, really weird sounding problem. So we were told she had a deletion and a duplication on her 18th chromosome, which was as much a gobbledygook to me then as it would have been to you just now. So I, I contacted Unique because I found them online and Beverly actually rang me the next day and it was a Saturday that's how kind and lovely she is uh, she had her own chromosome 18 damaged child who died when she was 21 so she knows all about this subject and she's a biochemist and has done genetics uh, research so she's an expert in her field but also has personal experience so she's a very very interesting woman uh, to hear and we're going to, I'm going to be interviewing her tomorrow because as I said we're doing a fundraiser for Unique which is a very very small charity but a very vital charity to support families like ours and we're up to just a tad under two thousand pounds in our fundraiser how brilliant are all of you guys uh, so it's on super troopers and we've raised as i said just shy of two thousand which is absolutely phenomenal and that will make a big difference to unique so we're, we're carrying on the fundraising for a little bit longer so do come and join us tomorrow at four o'clock if you possibly can i'd love to have your company and i think you would uh, really enjoy hearing what what uh, Beverly has to say she's a woman in her 60s herself okay thanks to all of you for coming thank you Sally again for brilliant demonstration thank you Emily for being a brilliant example of a fresh young and gorgeous face <laughs> which we of course all aspire to <laughs> in our own little way so as I said thanks all of you for coming and uh, I'll hopefully see you tomorrow bye-bye everybody bye-bye